Orthodox Church, it is believed that the very first celebration of the mystery of the Divine Liturgy was by our Lord Jesus Christ during the Last or Mystical Supper. It was then that he uttered these words, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. From that very moment, Christians have celebrated this divine mystery and have remembered and communed with Christ ever since. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, many great fathers and saints of the Orthodox Church have experienced divine revelations during this service. It is the goal of this presentation to guide participants of the Divine Liturgy to a fuller and deeper understanding of the profound grace that the Fathers have experienced in this service. It is now time for the priest and deacon to prepare themselves for the sacred mysteries. One of the greatest requirements for clergy to celebrate the divine services is that of love. It is important to note that although these are the first prayers said by the priest in church, there was also preparation the previous night. Before the priest even comes to this point, he also fasts and keeps vigil throughout the night saying prayers to ready his soul for the great offering. It is required by every Christian who approaches the holy gifts to make a similar preparation, readying oneself for Christ. The priest now enters the altar to put on his vestments in preparation for the liturgy. By wearing the priestly vestments, he reminds all that although he comes from this world, he does not belong to this world alone. He stands between man and God, a bridge by which our prayers rise up to the Most High and the gifts of God come down. The most important vestment to the priesthood is his epitrachilion, or his priestly stole. This symbolizes the grace of the priesthood and of the participation in the priesthood of Christ. Saint Simeon of Thessaloniki teaches that it is used at every rite he performs because it symbolizes the performative grace of the Holy Spirit. The priest now washes his hands because the hands are a symbol of every action. By washing them, we suggest that all our actions are pure and blameless. Saint Germanus. When the priest approaches the prothesis table, it is as if he were approaching Bethlehem, the cave in which Christ was born. This is why it is common to see an icon of the nativity near the prothesis table. Bethlehem was the place where God first appeared in the flesh, and this is why Christ's first liturgical appearance is here, St. Simeon of Thessaloniki. St. John Chrysostom talks about the symbolism of the bread based on St. Paul, who says, Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. St. John asks, What is the bread? He answers, the body of Christ. Not several bodies, but one body. Just as the bread, while it is made up of many grains, is one bread, so that the grains are nowhere apparent, even though they are there. In the same way, we are united with each other and with Christ. The prayers read, like a sheep he was led to slaughter, let us pray to the Lord. 
and as a blameless lamb before his shearer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. In his lowliness his judgment was taken away. One of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. He that saw it bear record, and his record is true. The priest then takes a large particle out, remembering the Mother of God. The priest then takes out particles for the nine ranks of saints, the first being in honor of John the Forerunner, then the prophets, apostles, hierarchs, martyrs, venerable ones, unmercenaries, then the ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, the temple saint, and the saint of the day as one piece, and finally, the third and last, in honor of the composer of the liturgy. In the next part of this service, the priest remembers all of the living and dead souls by name. When the dead are remembered, St. Nicholas Cavasilas teaches, the souls of the departed receive remission of sins through the prayers of the priests and by the grace of the precious gifts which have been sanctified. At the completion of all of the commemorations, the assembly of God, which is the Son, assembled together through himself, is now all present. Thus we are all one, St. Simeon of Thessaloniki. The service of preparation has now come to a close as the priest covers the gifts to protect them from harm. After the gifts are cared for, the deacon senses the altar and then the entire church. Saint Simeon of Thessaloniki recalls the teaching of Saint Dionysius that the altar is to be sensed first, indicating to the faithful that God's grace and gifts come from the altar. This also indicates the grace, gift, and fragrance of the Holy Spirit, which is poured out upon the word from heaven through Jesus Christ in which, through Christ, has ascended again to heaven. The priest, lifting up the gospel book, makes the sign of the cross over the altar, and with a clear voice proclaims, Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. By this first petition, the deacon proclaims how the faithful should begin their prayer, foremost with peace. The more the heart ceases to be disturbed by recollections of external things, the more the intellect is astounded by understanding divine meanings. Saint Isaac the Syrian. Here we pray for our beloved hierarchs, who are a part of an unbroken chain, leading to the very first celebration of the Eucharist, when Christ himself instituted this mystery. We have great power when we are gathered together for prayer. St. John Chrysostom reminds us, someone from the congregation commanded you to pray privately for the salvation of the bishop. Every one of you would shrink from it, 
believing the burden to be beyond your powers. But when all of you together hear the deacon directing you and saying, let us pray for the bishop, you do not shrink from carrying out his commission, but zealously rise your prayer, because you know the power of your gathering. As the deacon continues the petition, the faithful respond to each one with a cry, Lord have mercy. This is said after each petition, because it implies both gratitude and confession. Begging for God's mercy is also asking for his kingdom, which Christ promised to give to those who seek it. St. Nicholas Cabasibus. conclusion of the great litany, the faithful now sing a series of psalms, which St. John Chrysostom teaches us. Great benefit and abundant sanctification are to be gained from spiritual psalmody, and it can become the foundation for the whole of spiritual life. For the words of the hymns purify the soul, and the Holy Spirit enters immediately into the soul that sings them. In the Orthodox Church, we do not use musical instruments in worship. Rather, we become instruments of prayer, singing to our Lord. In some cases, the faithful sing these hymns antiphonally, meaning they are sung alternately by two choirs. This was first introduced by St. Ignatius, the God-bearer, when he had a vision seeing two choirs of angels singing antiphonally to the Holy Trinity. This practice, however, is not standard in most parishes today. The priest then takes the gospel book and hands it to the deacon and begins to process to the front of the royal doors. The clergy are led out by a candle, which represents St. John the Forerunner, who prepared the way for Christ's word. The entrance signifies the coming of the Son of God into the world. the gospel has been introduced, we hear the singing of the hymns to the saints of the day, and then the hymn of the thrice holy, which glorifies the Holy Trinity. Saint Germanus teaches us that the thrice holy hymn is sung three times, because the threefold appellation of the holy applies to each of the three persons of the one Godhead. Each of them is holy and mighty and immortal. Thou, O Lord, shalt protect us and preserve us from this generation forever. 
At this point in the service, we hear the introduction to the epistle lesson called the Prokimenon, which is a psalm verse that pertains to the epistle reading to follow. It symbolizes the revelation of divine mysteries by the prophets and the foretelling of the coming of Christ the King. The reading is from the Epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Hebrews. I will sing of thy mercies, O Lord, forever. Alleluia. Praise the Lord as the people rejoice with excitement to hear the proclamation of the Holy Gospel. Before the coming of the Lord, it was not possible for man to be joyful, because Christ alone brought us joy. If anyone was joyful before he came to earth, they were joyful because they had been admitted to the mysteries concerning him. As Christ said of the patriarch Abraham, Abraham rejoiced that he was to see my day. He saw it and was glad. Christ is the exaltation that arises in our souls when we gather together to worship him. St. Nicholas Kabasikas. covering the deacon's face to symbolically show that it was Christ's face. Now the deacon leans his mouth onto the gospel so that the faithful may hear Christ's voice. At that time, Jesus entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. At the end of the Gospel reading, the priest descends from the high place, and St. Maximus the Confessor teaches that it signifies the end of the world, for after the reading of the Holy Gospel, the bishop descends from the throne, and the celebrants dismiss and send away the catechumens and those unworthy of divine contemplation of the mysteries which are about to be presented. The reading then manifest that which is written, that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the world, and then the end will come. Matthew 24, 14. Choir now reminds the faithful who mystically represent the cherubim and who sing the thrice holy hymn to the life creating trinity must now lay aside all earthly cares. Mm -hmm. 
St. John Chrysostom reminds us that the soul that has not learned to despise the petty concerns of everyday life will not be able to marvel at the things of heaven. Let no one enter the church bringing with him the cares, distractions, or fears of everyday life. Let us all enter, having first left all these things outside at the door of the church, for we are entering a heavenly palace. We are walking in the places that radiate light. After the priest purifies himself through repentance and asks forgiveness of the faithful, he then processes with the holy gifts. This transfer of the precious gifts from the table of oblation to the altar signifies the Lord's entry into Jerusalem from Bethany. The celebrant becomes the colt upon which no passion has ever sat and is therefore accounted worthy to carry the King of Glory. The placing of the gifts on the altar and the closing of the royal doors are the final actions of the great entrance. When the priest places the gifts down, this represents the hands of Saints Joseph and Nicodemus, who performed Christ's burial. Saint Germanus. proclamation from the deacon, the faithful now enter into the most sacred part of the divine liturgy, the holy anaphora. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. terrible mysteries which are celebrated at every assembly of the faithful and which afford abundant salvation are called the Eucharist, literally thanksgiving, because they are the recollection of many benefactions. They show us the culmination of divine providence, and in every way they prepare us to give thanks to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord. time when the sacrifice is being made, the priest exhorts us to give thanks to God for the whole world, for the past and the present, for all that has taken place and for all that will take place in the future. This thanksgiving of ours liberates us from earth and transports us to heaven, transforms us from humans into angels. This hymn is a combination of the hymn that the prophet Isaiah heard when he received his calling as a prophet, and when the people received Christ in the holy city of Jerusalem. It is the bringing together the hymns of angels and men to glorify God. 
Then all the nations and peoples from all ages will fall down before him, and without objection will offer worship. There will be one wonderful symphony of praise. The saints will sing hymns as they have always done, while the impious will of necessity make supplication. Then indeed the triumphal hymn will be sung by all with one voice, by the victors and by the vanquished. Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you for the remission of sins. supper at which Christ was present. In no way is that supper different from this mystery, for it is he that offers both the one and the other. He who performed the mystery at the Last Supper, he it is who now accomplishes the mystery at the Divine Liturgy. This holy table is the same table as that of the Last Supper, and is nothing less. St. John Chrysostom. The priest then calls down the Holy Spirit to change our offering of bread and wine to the body and blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. This mystery is a work of the descent of the Holy Spirit because he did not descend once and only and then abandon us, but he is and will be with us forever. It is he that performs the mysteries through the hand and the tongue of the priest. Especially for most holy, most pure, most blessed, glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever virgin Mary. Burning desire, let us cross our hands, one upon the other, and receive into them the body of the Crucified One, and after touching it with our eyes, our lips, and our foreheads, let us partake of the divine coal. Thus the fire of our love will be ignited by the divine coal, and burn up our sins and illumine our hearts, and through participation in the divine fire, we shall catch on fire and be deified. St. John Damascus When you are about to draw near to this divine and terrible table in this sacred mystagogy, you should draw near with fear and trembling, with a pure conscience, with fasting and prayer, and without making any noise. Tell me, man, why are you agitated? Why are you in a hurry? Are you under pressure from the need to get on with your work? At that moment, can it even cross your mind that you have work to do? Is it not the sign of a heart of stone that at the moment you think you are standing on earth rather than being a part of a choir of angels? St. John Chrysostom As one can see, the Divine Liturgy holds a very high place in the heart of the Orthodox Christian. With all of its beauty and splendor, it elevates the soul from the world to the heavenly realm. With a fuller understanding of the Divine Liturgy, one can focus more prayerfully on the magnitude of the service. 
Although the beauty of these commentaries moves the soul, nothing can replace the personal experience of the grace and love of Jesus Christ. Amen.